All right, there we go. Hello, everyone. How's it going? Team here, and this is BXJS livestream. And uh, today we are starting another uh, large ish project. Let's call it this way. Not even sure if it's going to be like super large or medium sized, but at least it's going to be, you know, decently complex, and we're not going to finish it within one livestream. So it's going to be a longer running project. Let's put it this way. It's been a while since we've done it, one of those. And I basically asked most of you guys on Discord and on YouTube, uh, what did you want to see? And majority of answers uh, was that you want to see me build task manager that I had in mind for a few years now. So the gist is basically that, yes, we're going to be building task manager with Next.js simply because it's a you know, straightforward way of doing that. Uh, and the more broad idea is that I want to build a task manager that I had an idea about, right? So it's like there's a few things that I think are missing from the task managers that I want to improve upon. But I also want to do it in a way that, you know, we um, build it and work on it as the project that you want to ship. So we are not just going to build the prototype or whatever, but we're actually going to add testing, like, you know, integration tests, end-to-end -end tests, we're going to add continuous integration, we're going to add continuous deployment, and we're going to have this one nice package of the app that is basically built from the idea to the final version that is deployed live somewhere. How feature rich is it going to be? I don't know. Maybe we'll, you know, maybe you guys get bored and we just wrap it up real quick. Or maybe you are curious about where do I take this and then we stream more of it. So we're going to see how that develops. But basically the cool thing about it is that the very basic idea behind this task manager is really straightforward and we probably can build at least partially within like next one or two streams. Uh, and then, you know, if, if again, if there's interest, we can take it as far as possible because I have a ton of crazy ideas about that that I think might work, but uh, we're going to see how that goes. Uh, hey, Carlos, welcome to the stream. Hey, me, welcome to the stream. Nice to see you guys as well. Let's rule the world with this. Well, that was my idea. So uh, let me just outline, I guess, what I think, like, what, what is the my general idea about this task manager? Well, the thing is, you know, that if you are worked on any relatively large projects, you know that you need some sort of a way to track your tasks, to split them, to manage them between team members, and so on and so forth, right? So there's like a ton of very popular tools out there from extremely complex ones like Asana, for example, that works really well for large teams and extremely complex and large projects. But you know, if you're getting smaller, it's not really that helpful. Then if you're getting smaller, there's, for example, Trello, which also works really well. But then again, it also has some limitations and some caveats when you think about it, right? There is the notion, which is currently extremely popular, I guess, would call it platform for everything, because it's really not just a task manager, it's just a thing that allows you to write down stuff. And yeah, so those are like the three major ones, I guess, that come to mind in terms of like, obviously, there's like a lot, a lot other platforms and, and versions of it, but they are pretty similar to essentially Asana or Trello or Notion or whatever, right? Monday, yes, Microsoft Teams, uh, what else is there? Like there's the Atlassian stuff and pretty much like a lot of them have their own versions, right? They're sort of, when you look at them, they're very close to each other. Um, Jira is, you know, close to, or I mean, it's not close. Jira is literally that, although you can uh, extend it with plugins. But anyway, so my problem with most of those is number one, they're way too complex, at least for my personal task keeping, right? Uh, because it's like, if you take Asana, you can spend weeks there just tweaking it. Same goes for like stuff like Jira or whatever, right? Because they are aimed for extremely large teams that require complex workflows. In my case, I just need some place to jot down my ideas. So uh, this problem number one. And number two, the way that they sort of give you the structure for the tasks is not quite what I would want to see. Uh, hey, YS, welcome to the stream. So my idea for the task structure is actually relatively straightforward and uh, comes from Discord, to be honest. So I, I, you know, I like I use Discord constantly. We have our Discord BXJS server there, right? And the way that the Discord structures the conversations, I guess, is um, basically I think that would fit 
the way that I would want to see the tasks structured in a task builder, right? Obviously, it's not going to be servers, channels, and then text. It's actually going to be slightly different. But the gist is you have some sort of a very top level entity that groups the tickets or tasks or whatever, right? So this is going to be like projects or teams or something else. Then you have your task list with specific tasks or topics or whatever. And then within the task, you got your task description with to do's or, you know, more fine grained things. And then the cool thing is that I think in this way, when you do this sort of topic description and tasks inside, you could actually add stuff like real time chat, effectively turning into turning the whole platform into something like Discord um, with task manager integrated or Viki or whatever. So it's like, again, I have like two tons of crazy ideas, but essentially today we're going to set up the foundation for it, uh, create a UI similar ish to discord where you can have those sort of projects, task list, and then task description, try to build the actually the task description editor, or maybe find the one that exists. And uh, yeah, so plan for today, uh, authentication, then the basic layouts, creating of those project spaces, creating of the tasks, and then editing the task text. That's about what I want to do today. Hopefully, that's not too much, but we're going to see how that goes. And then, I, as I said, you know, there's like a tons of ideas we can go from there if there's interest uh, from like real time conversations and real time updates to things like repeated tasks like, you know, weekly progress reports or whatever, the fancy uh, infographics for the task completion and things like this. Uh, but that is if there is interest and if there is um, basically desire to explore more of that. Database, probably MongoDB because I want to think too much about that. But uh, yeah, I think the Discord take on task management is really interesting. Nothing else does it quite like that. That's the thing, right? So I've been like, I've been thinking that... Uh, again, this only would love uh, yeah, let me try that again. This would only work for small teams or individual people. But yeah, you know, I think, you know, for me personally, this is the approach I would like to see. So this is why I'm building it. Are we going to use diagrams features? Uh, well, so yeah, here's the thing, like the way I want to build it essentially is to allow um, plugins that would allow you to do diagrams, workflows, and just embed basically third party tools. I already tried that, like I tried to do like a very quick prototype a few years ago. And with web components, you know, or I guess the web platform, you can quite easily embed stuff like the um, calls, right? So you can set up a task, strap the deadline on it, and then put in the uh, embed from the any online platform so that when people come in, they can actually have an online call right in place. And that works perfectly well, actually. But anyway, um, I guess let's just get cracking with it. So I created the task manager folder here. The name is not exactly inspired right now, but we're going to figure out something later. So let me just git init this and uh, npm init minus y. Um, I think I'm going to be using npm. So they finally fixed all the npm seven issues. Um, where like, if you have any good ideas for names, do send them over wherever comments, chats, we, we basically can figure it out later. Now we are going to be using next yes, as I said, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, okay, they moved all the docs here. So I guess we're going to get um, yeah, let's try create next app. I actually haven't used that. So uh, is it probably Yes, do go ahead and do that. Uh, what is your project named? I guess it's going to create a new folder. So let's kill that and uh, do it again. So task manager, you're going to be called task manager and okay, react react done. Yeah, okay, so it's created the folder. I assume it's also going to do the git stuff. So we're just going to go with that. Now what we will need, as I said, the first step is going to be authorization and authentication. So we need accounts. Um, I remember seeing the Next.js AUTH plugin. Uh, was it? Yeah, I think it was Next Next AUTH, right? Uh, I covered it on the BXJS, but hell if I remember any of the... Yeah, I think this was it. So this we're probably going to use this one just because I don't want to write my own thing. And uh, uh, yeah, it's like the last time I checked it, it looked pretty nice. So why the hell not? Okay, uh, there we go. So sign commit, super nice. Uh, whoa, that's right. That's not my passphrase. This is my passphrase. That is absolutely correct. 
So, okay, cool. Um, NPM, okay, I guess code should, yep, there we go, refresh that. Cool, so there's our package JSON. We got the dev, we got the pages, we got the styles. Okay, so you now get the whole like super nice setup. Um, okay, that was actually really fast. Eh, what? Compi oh, okay, it was still compiling stuff. Are we live now? No, we are not. Well, those 3000, what is going on now? Where's my server? Uh, hello? Is it my VSL bugging out or what's going on? Um, okay, right, I don't have simple server. What was it, Python 3 minus M? Are we, is forwarding working correctly or is VSL 2 decided to break on me? It seems like VSL2 decided to break on me. Okay, then. Um, how do I fix that? Okay, let me try this. So I'm gonna close my VS code. I'm gonna shut down the VSL and then I'm gonna reopen that and hope that this fixes it actually. Okay, there we go. There's my identity added. Okay, cool. Um, no, not website. Task manager, please. Let's make it a bit bigger. Right. Uh, Python 3M server, are we working now? ASL, can you please start working? No, what is going on? Okay, uh, something is wrong with my uh, network. Where's my network status? What is going on? Change adapter options. Um, VSL Ethernet, yeah, it seems like it's enabled, right? So this, okay, so I got the NordVPN thing now here. Is it because of, no, that, sh that shouldn't work. Like that shouldn't be a problem, I think, right? Wait a second, is there a problem? NordVPN VSL2. Guys, I recently installed NordVPN, uh, but yeah, maybe there was a mistake. Checkpoint VPN breaks connectivity. Okay, so VPN and VSL2 is a problem. You have to restart the VSL, but I just restarted it, right? Or do I need to like kill the demon uh, completely? Is that what you're telling me? We could do that. So where's my... Um, so services, where's LXC, LXC, uh, come on. Yeah, yeah, there we go, LXC manager, restart. Okay, so restart it, uh, let's see. Okay, let's try this again. Uh, so Python 3, simple server, 8080. Okay, what is, I, this is mildly annoying. Um, Yes, I did the VSL shutdown just now and it didn't actually help. So this restarting either service or that doesn't actually help. But it seems like so ping eight, eight. Okay, is it gonna be VSL debugging stream? Okay, so we have internet access from that, but we don't have uh, if config, you know what we could do? We could just do that, right? So that should, uh, wait a second. I can just, for now, I can just use the intranet IP. Is it 8080? No, 8000. Um, okay, so intranet IP works. I'm just gonna go with that because screw this. I don't have time to deal with that. Uh, hey Donna, welcome to the stream. All right, uh, GitHub BXJS task manager, I open the code here. So there's something with network routing, I guess it's a VSL uh, compat issue or something, but I'm not gonna try to you know fix this now. I'll, I'll do it off stream because this is the boring stuff that nobody wants to see. Uh, but we are, yes, so we now have thus npm run dev. Uh, here's the question, does it listen on zero zero or local host? Because if it listens on, lo on zero on local host, we're not gonna see anything, right? Oh, okay, cool. So it listens on zero, so we're good. We got our next JS app running here. We do not actually need Okay, so we do need a PI, uh, API routes. Uh, we do need the app components. We do not need the whole damn page here. I think I'm just uh, had, yeah, okay, that's fine. We got the main, we got the, this stuff is okay. I guess we can just kill all of, all of, yeah, I guess we can kill all of that, right? So we can just uh, chuck this and chuck that. And now we're gonna have this welcome to next JS, perfect. Hey, Major Malfunction, welcome to the stream. Uh, VSL2 does use local hosts. Uh, it's basically the networking broke because I installed VPN and it just decided not to work. I, like, I don't know why. I mean, let's just try again. Maybe it started working now. 
No, no. So I guess my VPN installation just broke it because VPN had some, you know, networking drivers, like custom stuff. I didn't even know if I needed to be honest. <laughs> Maybe I should just kill VPN and be done with it. Anyway, so we did that. We got the uh, basic page warning. We got the okay fav icon is now versal, which is perfectly fine for now. We got the styles. We do not need that. We're not going to be using this. And we are. Uh, where's the tempo styles? Okay, so we are not going to be using uh, CSS. We are actually. Well, I think we can kill the styles thing completely for now. I'm going to be using uh, my favorite Tailwind CSS. So I think uh, Next.js Tailwind, I think they had an example there. So I'm just going to grab that. Oh, okay, Next.js, where is the GitHub? I'm pretty sure they had an example. So I'm just going to use that. Um, to, 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 to. Oh, no, but not packages. Examples is what I want. Have I tried JSS? I am not a fan. Like, I, I really like Tailwind. And I like, you know, I don't really like all the CSS and JS solutions because they just feel cumbersome to me. It's uh, like, it's my personal preference, but you know, this is like what I basically prefer and Tailwind just feels like magic to me. So this is what I'm going to be using basically. Okay, npm install dev. Um, so we're going to go for Tailwinds, post CSS preset env and flex bug fixes. Okay, uh, interesting. So we did that. Then we got the Tailwind CSS uh, to Tailwind config JS. So we're going to go with that. Sure, why not? Okay, so this goes here. What do we have here? Let's have a look. So for Tailwind config, we got purge based on components. Okay, so this is going to auto purge CSS based on what we use. Uh, we don't actually want any colors for now. So that is I mean, I guess we can just leave it here for now. Fine, that's that's okay. Okay, and then we got post CSS config, which I assume we're going to use our custom plugins here. Let me just quickly throw it. No, no, no quickly throw it together. So just raw copy that paste it here. So we're using tailwind, we're using this flex bugs fixes, whatever that does. And then we're using the preset env with flex box no 2009 stage three custom properties. Okay, so that's like basically post CSS preset env is similar to the uh, I guess the Babel preset env, right, which is kind of nice. Okay. All right, so we got this stuff. Uh, so what do we need to make it work now? Uh, so we set up post CSS, we set up the tailwind, we got the package, I think the package didn't have anything else modified. So uh, okay, this is with example, we don't care about that. So what did they do to make it work? Okay, so we got the styles. I guess we do need styles folder. Okay. Oh, all right, because we yeah, okay, we have to include the tailwind itself anyway. So I guess I was a bit too um, quick on killing the styles folder. Uh, index CSS, paste this, that is perfectly fair. Okay. And then I guess it includes styles in app, right? Yep. Okay. Right. So I killed a bit too much, but that is perfectly fine. We can put it back. Okay, so I think this should start working. Uh, yes, Tailwind is incredibly easy to set up whenever you have uh, post CSS access. In this case, Next.js comes with post CSS. So it's, you know, it's super easy to do. Uh, right, styles. Okay, so right, we are not using uh, this anymore. So we should be using the right, I probably should use that to use here. So let me just quickly style that. Um, text fold and stale tailwind stuff is not kicking in for whatever reason. So but that's okay. So I think I think I'm doing this or maybe not. I, I honestly don't remember where's my tailwind tailwind snow. Where's my tailwind extension? I'm pretty sure I had one. But it's it seems like sometimes it doesn't work correctly. Uh, install blah, 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 to install tailwind config. Yeah, okay, so if you have tailwind config, it should start working. So maybe I need to like reload my window or something. Are we gonna get the tailwind now? Oh, I think it was font bold, right? Fonts. there we go. Now it works. Cool. So we got the auto suggestions. And yep, there we go. Cool. So we got this stuff now it's working. And uh, Welcome to Next.js. We don't need that. Okay, cool. So we got Tailwind. I guess that's a good moment. Let's try to sort of 
follow the best practices, I guess, and try to commit at the reasonable times without like spending the whole whole stream doing stuff and then like, oh, I probably should commit. Okay, git commit at tailwind CSS. Hey, Mikhail, welcome to the stream. Okay, uh, we added tailwind. Uh, this is good. Okay, so we got this running now. We are we need to set up the authentication. So for that, we are gonna have a login page, right? Login JS. We are gonna have. Okay, so we don't need app for now. We don't need that. We don't need that anymore. So we're gonna have a login page. We are gonna have register page. And I'm just gonna copy this register. Okay, so um, let's do task manager register. Obviously, we will have to edit this later on. But that is perfectly fine. And this is let's just call it task manager. Uh, hey, Mandaputra, welcome to the stream. All right, so this is gonna be login. This is gonna be register. Okay, and if we go here now, so we got this thing and then theoretically slash login and slash register should also open. Yep. That does work as expected. Perfect. Okay, so let's get started with Next.js Auth. Um, check out example code. Yes, this is exactly what we want. So we want Next Auth package installed, which we're gonna do uh, right now and PM install. I guess it's not development dependency. It's actual. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Unable to resolve blah 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 from the root. Okay, next. Oh, why do you have to be like this? Oh, come on, seriously. Okay, I mean, maybe it's not a good idea to build this um, using the latest npm, so let's just use uh, stable. Okay, let me kill node modules and reinstall. So I, I switched to node 14. No, I haven't. What? Oh, right, I forgot. Um, I forgot to do this. So let's just do that. Uh, so I'm going to switch to the node LTS with NPM six, right? And uh, so I did I killed the node modules, right? Node minus V. We're now at node 14 and NPM minus V is six. I'm going to do NPM install. So NPM seven is a lot faster and works a lot better, but it still has some problems with peer dependencies. And even though I managed to fix quite a few of my projects to work with NPM seven, some of them still just basically crash and be like, ah, I cannot resolve the tree, which I guess is partially the fault of the ecosystem as well, because like you have to adapt to work with installable peer dependent. Oh, I don't know, like, is it a fault? I don't think it's a fault of ecosystem, but anyway, it basically doesn't work. So we're going to fall back on the older version that does work. Okay, so we installed this thing. Um, we got adds uh, next add. Okay, so um, easiest way clone example app. So we don't want example app. We're just gonna go step by step. Um, hey, Sid Hart, welcome to the stream. Uh, doing good, thank you. Okay, uh, to a project, uh, blah, blah, blah. Create a file next.js awuth in, what does this actually do? Is it a, like authentication? Okay, so this is the providers, that's fine. But what does this syntax do with the uh, API routes? This is definitely API route, right? So why is it? Why is there dots? Slug. Okay, so catch. -all. Oh, okay. So it's a catch all routes that will handle to pages API auth. Okay, so let's pages API auth. Okay, and then we're gonna create next auth js okay so it's basically going to catch everything that goes to api auth right i i think i'm understanding this correctly okay so it's going to go here right so in this case we got the provider from github but we're not going to do that we're going to roll our custom provider and uh to the database is optional required to persist accounts okay so we are definitely going to use the database but we're going to figure out which one Okay, um, let me see a chat. Uh, what do you think about cyberspace dev? I have no idea what that is. Online game for what's for programmers. I have never seen that, so I don't know. 
I don't think any, like, I've seen quite a bit of games for programmers, but I don't think any of them actually, like, caught my attention, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's like, you know, maybe just not my thing. Uh, why is I just noticed your donation? Thank you very much, man. Highly appreciate it. Um, okay, Bowder, hello, welcome to the stream. Swarlow, hello, hello, guys, welcome to the stream. All right, continuing, we got this basic setup, right? So we need to change the provider to something i guess is there like a, a simple like login password based thing that you can do yourself because i, I like i don't want to do the um what do you call it oh boy uh, like you know using a custom provider there we go that looks correct uh custom provider scope version no that sign yeah there we go sign in with email that's exactly what we want okay server from how long? Oh, okay. So it's like a magic link thing. Yeah, perfect. That sounds actually quite good. So let's go with that. Um, hey, Benjamin, welcome to the stream. All right. So server, email server, email from. What is email server and what the format of it is? Email provider documentation. Okay. Uh, what else? What, what other providers do we have there? Uh, how the hell is their email provider is not mentioned in this list? It feels weird. Identity server, Okta, Slack, Spotify. So it basically supports all third-party providers you can imagine. Oh, there's the credentials. Okay. Uh, yeah, you know what? Let's go with credentials. Since like we're going to have the database anyway for our tasks. So why not just go for credentials, right? Uh, sign in with form. Okay. Credentials, username. Uh, okay, let's. this is going to be email. Type text, placeholder email uh your let's go with your email.com why not password password yep so credentials okay um all right so we need our database connection i guess and for that i guess i'm gonna create a new folder called source and create the db i guess right so i'm gonna be okay i probably should save that yep that looks fine database url Okay, uh, <laughs> let me think for a second. So what we need, we need a connection to database and I can actually just go ahead and, and grab it from uh, graffiti, right? Because we basically set up the connection to MongoDB last time. So why not just take it from here? Um, because I am lazy. Right, um, to do mongoose, there we go. Oh yeah, right, we should probably install our mongoose package. So um, we're gonna be using MongoDB as I already said in the beginning. So we are going to grab all of that and this is going to be our DB thing. So we don't need Lodash. We don't need that. And right. So I guess, I don't know if we need this build model thing. Let me think for a second. So, okay. So we, there's our, um, mm -hmm. so database. Yes. So we're going to have that. I'm thinking we need a config. What was the way of the uh, React? Uh, sorry, the Next.js with config. I remember they had the next config thing, right? Next config JS. Yep. And uh, wasn't there a different like? Was there? There was. Uh, let me try that again. I remember there was a way for uh, like creating a server on the config. For advanced behaviors, you can create next config JS. Regular module, not adjacent file, gets used by next server and build phases, not included in the browser. Okay, so it's run during the builds. Uh, here's the question. Do I want that or do I want my own custom config? Uh, any particular reason for choosing MongoDB over MySQL? It's simpler. Like MySQL is, is cool and everything. And okay, maybe not MySQL, Postgres is, you know, faster, better, whatever, but Mongo is just way simpler and works equally fine for like 95% of cases. So it's just easier to get started with basically, let me put it this way. Okay, uh, yeah, you know what, let's just, let's just go by convention and create next config JS and then uh, do the module exports, whatever config options are here. In our case, we need to say that the database no, wait, I'm probably there are some specific keys, right? 
Uh, next config is not going to be processed by webpack or whatever, which is perfectly fine. Rewrites, redirects, custom webpack config. Okay. Uh, I remember they had this special runtime. Yeah, there we go. There's a runtime config. Okay, so this is a, this is exactly what we want. Okay, so save that. Um, so we do not need this. We do need the server config, and then here we need the database process and uh, what did we use here? I think I'm just gonna go for that, right? So, okay, database URL, or we are gonna have the default URL, which is gonna be, um, whoops, no, that's a wrong button. Uh, what was the default URL for MongoDB? Which one did we use? No, not here. Oh boy, hell if I remember what I did here. Config, there's the config, and there we go. Mm, okay, yeah, 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 sure. And this task manager, let's just go with that. Uh, you using, yes, I am using, hey Aaron, welcome to the stream. I am using Next.js 10, so we're gonna try and use as many of new fancy features that uh, as possible, basically. Okay, so we got that, which means that here we can actually just import that, right? Require, so we can go uh, next config. And that's gonna be server runtime config, and that's gonna be database. Uh, you know what, let's rename it to database URL because it's just a bit more descriptive. So this goes here, okay, on error. All right, so here, this is gonna be const connected. And uh, exp I guess we can just export it right away, right? Exports connected. So this is our connection ready promise. And we need to export the DB itself, exports DB, okay. And then we need to create our model. So in this case, um, we're gonna create the user JS, right? Okay, so we need to uh, define that. So we're gonna have this schema, I guess. Yeah, we need to import that from Mongoose. So we don't care about create connection in this case. So we're gonna have this Mongoose schema. The schema for user is gonna be what? We're gonna have an email, which is gonna be a type string, whoops. I cannot type apparently, and it's gonna be unique, right? So, and then we're gonna have a password, which is gonna be string. And I guess unique and required is what we wanna say here. And this is gonna be type string, required, true. So some basic validation. I think for now that's fine. We don't care about that. Okay, and then we need to, I guess we can just, uh, to say, okay, module exports, uh, whoops, no, mongoose schema is what I wanna do. And then let's just call it user schema. So just export the schema from here and then import it here and construct this, right? So user, okay. And then here's gonna be user schema. So it's gonna auto import it. Yep, that looks perfect. All right, uh, users, wait a second. I am doing something wrong because this is not how you initialize the models and I completely forgot how to do that. So we need to do what? A schema, oh right, schema name is first and then the schema itself. Okay, so it's gonna be user, there we go. Okay, models, so we created our user thing, which means we can now import this from uh, next oath, right? I think that should work. Okay, so we can import from, da, 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 let me think this goes even higher, even higher. That is a lot of dots. We need to figure out the way to make it nicer. Okay, and then from here, we should get the user. I don't know if we need that connected at all in this case, but we'll see. Okay, so, um, da, da, da. hey Glinkis, welcome to the stream, going good, how are you? All right, so we need to find the user, right? So const existing user, uh, okay, user find, find one is what we want. Email is gonna be credentials email, I think at least, uh, I hope. No, okay, so it's gonna be like this, right? 
Okay, da da da. Yes, this looks good. So we got credentials email and then we need to compare passwords. Um, return null if credentials are invalid, return the user if not. Okay, so if existing user passwords. Okay, you know what, for now, I'm going to do a terrible thing and, and do this. Okay, we're going to return the object of user, but we need to fix this basically. So fix me uh, encrypt password and compare encrypted versions, right? Uh, hey, Hamza, welcome to the stream. All right, so uh, what is this? If user, oh, 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 I, uh, right, okay. So it's a promise resolve. Why Why don't they do promise resolve now? Why? Did... I mean, it's already a sync. It's already a promise. You don't need to do that, right? So we don't actually need any of that. And why is this a function? I am confused right now. Okay, anyway. So we just need to return the user or null, right? So this just literally can be done like this and we have to await the user while find one. Okay, we need to encrypt the password and we still need to do something with the registration. Uh, I see you're using Tailwind, how do you like it? I used it for our marketing website at work and I love the iteration speed up, but probably would not use it for a dashboard since a lot of more syntactic clutter. I absolutely love it. Like I've used it in a few production projects and it's, in my opinion, it's a godsend framework when you need to build custom uh, views basically. So uh, yes, I would not trade it for anything. If you really want to decrease the size of the classes that you have in the results, you can always extract stuff into your, you know, custom classes. But in my opinion, that's not a major problem. Okay, anyway, coming back to this thing. So we got the uh, credentials provider recommend. Okay, so there is a docs for this provider is just not mentioned in the list for whatever reason. We got authentic authorize. How do you register? I guess it doesn't have any registration method, right? So you have to register yourself. Okay, um, well, I guess let's do the API register methods. Okay, and then we just take hello method, put it in here. Okay, import from, okay, again, we're a lot of dots. We need to fix this at some point for reals. So we got the user, right? And then, okay, so what do we need to do is request, I assume we're gonna get it from the body, but let's have a look at the docs here. So, API routes, yes, uh, introduction, please. So status, ta -da 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 -da. method post, caveats, related, uh, response helpers. There we go, this is one thing. So we can just do that, that's a lot easier. Thank you very much. And then we need to, um, how do we handle the incoming data? So we got the method post, process a post request. Uh, da, 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 API middlewares, dynamic API routes. That's not it. How do I, I mean, I assume it's just gonna be request body, right? Console log, let's just do that. Okay, so we got our register thing. Let's do the basic form, I guess, here. Type text, uh, placeholder. So this is gonna be um, email, right? And then we're gonna have a second one, which is gonna be password, which is gonna be password. Um, have you considered using TypeScript? I have considered it, I don't like it. Like I tried it multiple times. It's just like, I, I feel like I'm fighting the TypeScript all the time instead of actually writing productive stuff. So it's just not, not something I enjoy basically using. I know that it has its use cases. I know that there are some things that you could do that are a lot better with it, but I like I couldn't care less. It's too much hassle, at least at this stage, you know, like if we're if we see that this project is going to be like very long running and we see the problems that there are some problems that can be solved with TypeScript, I don't mind migrating to it. But so far, I've I've seen like a three or four cases like that. And yeah, it's just not convinced, basically, at this point. Next commerce was built with Tailwind. Oh, nice. I didn't know that. That's pretty cool. 
uh, can't imagine writing even a tiny project without TypeScript at this point. I honestly don't see benefit of TypeScript at all. Like, like yeah, okay, you got your types, but well, for example, if you try to make TypeScript work with Mongoose, it's gonna be painful. Like I tried it three or four times and it never worked for me. There's like, I know that there's third party libraries that are wrappers around it that just basically provide types, but this is like annoying. Why would I want that? Okay, anyway, uh, coming back. Wait, no, wait, we don't actually need state, right? We, what we need is we need, um, we need refs. So we need the ref to whoops, email ref, and we need pass ref. Da -da -da. Okay, so uh, this is gonna be email ref. This is gonna be pass ref, right? Const to register. It's going to be a sync function that is going to say, okay, so we got a body, which is going to be email is going to be email ref current value. Password is going to be pass ref current value. So we just grab the whatever current values are. And then console log that body. Okay, um, add a button here. Uh, register there we go on click we are gonna run do register okay i think that uh are we still no we're not running npm run dev i oh yeah right that's probably not gonna work right because um so start docker docker uh we have yes we have dot mongodb running so start mongodb okay uh restart that i think now it is actually worked previous time as well interesting doesn't care about MongoDB that much, but uh, let's see. So we got our register page. Yeah, okay, that looks absolute shit, but it works. Just split them into separate lines here real quick. Okay, yep, that's fine, whatever. ASD13 register, do we get our log? Yes, we do. Do prefix seems a bit redundant. Yeah, that's fair enough. But I mean, for now, it's just like, the thing is that you want to denote that this is uh, essentially execution of it, right? So uh, I tend to prefix my functions that run something with verbs. I, it might be redundant, but it prevents basically name clashing with something that might be just called register. Anyway, so we're gonna run fetch API register, uh, register. There's gonna be method post and body is gonna be json stringify body and then we need to i keep forgetting that you have to do this thing every time you need headers uh with uh was it the content was it content type maybe i should just bring in some proper requests library okay um let me think. So we got Axios is too big. I want something smaller. There is something very small that is uh, does not function. Yeah, but it might not be function, right? There might be something else called register, and this is when you get into troubles. Essentially, this is sort of my problem with it. Fetch. Uh, node fetch. Got, well, yeah, I mean, God is pretty big as well. Unfetch. Yeah, we could go for unfetch or something. You got is nice, but it's it's quite large as well. So it's like if you go to the bundle phobia, bundle phobia is probably uh, got. Okay, it's got a lot smaller, but it's still like hundred, almost hundred kilobytes unminified. Was unfetch? This unfetch has automatic R JSON. So how do you? This is. No, okay, you still, okay, you know what? Let's just use fetch, why not? Maybe I'm overthinking this. Uh, isomorphic, no, I mean, the, uh, what do you call it? The Next.js already has the isomorphic on fetch, right? It's just, I'm too lazy to type this, but I guess that's fine, whatever. We can do that. Um, da -da 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 -da. Return our JSON. Then, so oh, this is our response. Okay, uh, I, I think, I mean, I should probably rewrite this 
Um, to the results. Let's do it properly right away. So we got this. Our JSON. Okay, that should be fine. And then we log. Re uh, result. Okay. Uh, well, I. Okay, I cannot type. That's a different problem. There we go. Okay, so we got this. Uh, but, but what's not found? What? Oh, right. <laughs> Of course, I should probably fix my routes as well. Uh, if you want to use another request library, you should only have to touch a single file. Feel free to tell me the buzz off if I'm... No, 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 you're not annoying. It's, it's perfectly fine. Um, using a single should be using a weight instead of the dots. No, I mean, I know that I should be using a weight, but this is just nicer, right? Why do I have two lines with a weight when I can just do that? Not being able to type is a reasonably common problem. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, so I fixed the route. Let's see. Um, there we go. That actually works. And we should see. Okay, so the body is literally just the object, which means we can const. We can just do that, right? And say, okay, so username, password. Uh, sorry, the email password is what I'm sending, right? Uh, email password. Yep. Okay, cool. You're not using a weight, you do not need to use a sync keyword. Well, I mean, I am using a weight, right? Just I'm not just awaiting everything. So uh, I do like my await. Um, okay, anyway, uh, coming back to this, so we need to import that us. Whoops, that is too much pressing source DB. So we need our user thing. And then what we need to do is, I guess, const user new user email password so again we need to hash the password here and i wonder if does this allow a sync functions i i really hope next.js api works with the sync functions user save so we save it i guess we probably should do try catch here catch error and then if it's an error then we send status uh, what would be the right status for this? Oh, God, I am really bad with statuses. And that's probably we need to stringify it somehow. Because you cannot just send it like this, right? Yes, it does. Okay, cool. Thank you very much. I didn't know. Like, I guess it probably does because Next.js is pretty progressive in this term. But, you know, you never know. User to object, uh, right. This probably should be under key user as well. Okay, right. So uh, status, HTTP status code. So what is the status for um, wrong, wrong, uh, I guess the, the broken uh, inputs, redirection, client errors, bad requests. I mean, for yeah, I guess 400 works, right? So for now, at least, Obviously, we want a more fine grained responses later on, but for now, 400 would do. Use argon to or bcrypt. Yes, this would be the um, sort of the long run plan. I guess let's just, I mean, okay, first of all, let's make sure that it actually just throws the user into the database. And then uh, once it does, we're going to throw in some bcrypt or argon or whatever. Okay, uh, register. And there is an internal error for uh, what is the error? DB is not defined. Okay, so I guess there is a problem here. Oh, right. Oh, oh, of course. Um, how the hell am I not getting ESL? I guess ESLint is not set up here. This is why I'm not complaining about everything. Uh, reset ESLint. Okay. I guess I need some ESLint config here because it didn't warn me about the uh, issues there. Okay. ASD 103 register and it actually created it. Okay, cool. So uh, obviously that is terrible email and terrible password, but we now know the database actually works. So uh, let's just, I guess let's commit that. That sounds like a good spot to commit something. Okay, um, set up basic next auth and basic register routes. Okay, that sounds good. Sign the commits. Okay, now let's throw in uh, what is the fancy? Is the argon two the fanciest method now? Uh, no JS. Yes, I remember I seen the package for it, but is there anything like more modern than argon two right now? 
or is this like considered the the uh, bleeding edge of the encryption or hashing i guess in this case um crypt nodes kind of still baffles my mind that it is, this is not the part of the uh, core for the javascript like why is this not i know that it supports like a bunch of algorithms but not the more modern ones or does it wait no js uh no js fs module i don't know why it links to fs modules but i'll take it so there is the crypto right is what we want and what do we have here certificate cipher decipher so we got Diffie hellman we got ecdh we got hmac yeah okay those are all i guess they are fine but you know what let's go with argon why not so um i think it's just argon right npm install uh, whoops that is one space less than it should be we got the argon 2 and then we got this and then we just uh we go here so this is the first thing import argon 2 from argon 2 okay so yeah okay hashed password is gonna be passwords so we save the whoops no hashed passwords okay I guess we can just import hash from here right so that i think that should work perfectly fine does it have any settings or something verify okay so you can verify with it that's perfect i guess it doesn't take any options okay that's fine all right so this should be decently good hashing algorithm uh i guess we should use it in our comparison as well right so wait compare what was it compare i think it was right uh or verify verify okay uh we need no but don't remove it verify yes verify verify um so we need yes existing and then the plain text password that we get from the user cool that should fix this i don't know if that will actually work but we're gonna find out in a second right so i think npm run dev that should fix it basically so we now have a properly hashed password i hope i'm gonna find out in a second and then we're gonna see how the login works uh, again hopefully it does work so let's see test at gmail.com one two three register there's our user there's our hashed password super nice okay so that works uh now how do we actually log in that's a real question here. Uh, multiple providers, example UI, use a custom sign-in page. There we go, that's exactly what we want. Okay, so this is what we need. Okay, so let me copy all of that. Uh, there's our login page, right? So I guess I'm just gonna throw, oh, okay. Maybe that's a bit too much, let's see. So there's the form is what we're interested in basically, right? So throw the form here, uh, we don't need, okay, so we do need this CSRF token client thing. And then CSRF token is gonna be uh, passed as a prop and I don't really like that the name is the same, but that's fine. Okay, so this is gonna be login, get initial props, uh, CSRF token. Uh, I really don't like this name clashing just yeah so surf token yeah, okay you know what that's fine why not let's just roll with it okay so now we should have this sign in thing it even has the csrf token out of the box which is kind of neat uh, let me have a look at the chat have you pushed the repo yet no i have not pushed the repo to github yet i'm just committing i mean let's you know what let's do this now why not uh so we are gonna be here and it's gonna be living under building x with js and it's gonna be called the task manager uh next js based task manager application public and uh, create repo and then we just uh no i mean that was already a third or fourth commit so we are fine this time around i'm not doing the same thing i did on my all my previous streams and i'm actually trying to commit them properly <laughs> 
No, no, perfectly fine. I mean, it's, you know, it's a valid, valid request, I guess. Uh, the readme is still default one, but you know, there's your source code. So uh, knock yourself. We're, we're already three commits in, you see, I'm not, not even doing one commit every hour this time around, which is surprising for me on streams. <laughs> but anyway, coming back to our login form. Uh, so we got this running. Yes, yeah, so we got that, uh, which means that we can go to login. And with our test, uh, okay, yeah, so this looks like absolute ass. Um, okay, anyway, you know what, that's that's fine. It, it doesn't matter how it looks. So let's just uh, go ahead and go with test at gmail.com. Password is one, two, three, sign in. Does it work? Uh, okay, well, it does redirect to, oh, it redirects to localhost. Uh, uh, okay, okay, so how do I, how do I change that? So it does, it seems like it does work, right? But, or maybe it doesn't. Wait a second. So what, what actually happens here during the login? So let me close this, uh, preserve log, test, sign in, sign in. Error failed. Okay, so it seems to use localhost as the domain which doesn't work for us. How do I tell it to use something different? Uh, what else? Client API, REST API, configuration. Yes, let's see what kind of option. Next, with URL. Okay, there we go. So this, I guess this is what we want to provide. Is there a way to provide it through the uh, canonical URL of your website? Is there a way to provide this through? Yeah, I mean, I guess it doesn't matter. So we can just kill that, say this, right? And it's going to be HTTP. And then we got to use our IP address because my VSL version is a bit screwed up. So we're just gonna use that. I really need to fix that because it's mildly annoying. I mean, using localhost is obviously a lot easier, but yeah. Uh, I commit too often instead probably. Um, a project of this size would probably be at 20 commit at least by now. Well, I think normally when I don't stream, I'm somewhere in the middle. So like I would probably do about six, seven commits by now, but yeah, it's like, you know, Whenever I stream is just like, I, I, I think I tend to think about too many things at once on stream for whatever reason, I don't know. Uh, I'm sorry, what now? Login failed, okay, so this is failed. Why does it fail? 200, oh, wait a second, what? Uh, type error cannot read property password of null. Okay, all right, so. <laughs> For some reason, it put the error into the URL. Okay, fine. Let's let's try to figure it out. Credentials. Uh, so why doesn't it find? I guess. Okay. So question is, which problem is it? Console log existing user and let's log creden. Let's log both and see what exactly is going on here, because it seems like it cannot find the something. Okay, so existing user is null. Oh, username. Why is it username? Wait a second. I thought I renamed it to email. I'm sorry, what? How is eh? Okay. I mean, why is it username? Credentials, domain, username, password. Okay, you know what? That's fine. Oh, right. I'm an idiot because I, my login form probably, hey, yes. Okay. <laughs> this is why it's, Yes, right. I, it's my own fault completely as usual. Does Next provide API support out of the box? Yes, Next.js does give you API support out of the box. And even better than that, it basically deploys them automatically as serverless functions to the uh, Versal if you want to deploy there. Uh, hey, so Carl, uh, uh, <laughs> what is wrong with me? Hey, Carlos, welcome back to the stream. Uh, I mean, it's going to be on YouTube as usual, so you know. Just uh, check out when you got time, if that looks interesting to you. Okay, uh, let's try this once again. So I fixed the thing now, test, no, it's uh, gmail.com this time around, password one to three, sign in. And it actually works, okay, cool. So this does work. And I think we should now have, we got the cookies set up, so we should probably kill that. Uh, hey, Leonid, welcome to the stream. Uh, nice beard. Thank you, man. I, you know, I've been trying to do something like that. <laughs> trying to grow my beard here a bit and see where, where that leads me. Maybe I'll, I'll turn into Santa Claus or something by the end of the year or, you know. 
Anyway, that actually works. Okay, so we got this thing. Uh, so login works. What we need to do now is... Uh, okay, so we do not actually need... Yeah, we do need that. We still need to tweak the registration thing. How the hell do I... There are, yeah, I guess after we register, we should send it to the login API so that we actually get the cookie set. Is it cold in Leipzig? Uh, like it's plus seven now, so not too cold. Seven Celsius, which is, you know, it's like, okay. I going to persist. Lo I mean, login is already persisted, right? So, uh, oh, you mean in the, this thing, right, 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 right. That's a, that's a fair point. I am not, I am actually not using... This should be, so next config, and that's gonna be server runtime config, and it's gonna be, uh, yes, and this gonna be server runtime config, uh, database URL. Okay, you are totally correct, that should be here. The question is, what is this database URL and what does it actually do? Um, database URL, uh, databases. Database, MySQL. So does it actually support Postgres, MySQL, supported databases? Postgres, MySQL, MongoDB. Okay, so it supports MongoDB out of the box. Nice, that's pretty cool. Hey, Gregor, welcome to the stream. All right, so we, I think we are pretty much set with this. The only thing we need to do now is to uh, protect our routes, right? So this is like one of the things we haven't done. So login registration now well, kind of works, but we are still missing the route protection. Hey, Mehmet, welcome to the stream. Long time no see, man. Um, which task manager will, um, which tasks this manager will manage? God damn it, you just had to write this. <laughs> uh, I mean, I did the pretty extensive description in the beginning of a stream, but there's no like formal description yet. Basically, the idea is to merge Discord with task management, and we're going to see how that develops. I'm not sure if that's going to work out, but we're going to try at least. And files are supported in Next.js. Uh, I mean, yeah, sure, we could migrate to end files at some point, but I don't think we need to right now. So I think it's per perfectly fine with uh, with current approach. Right, so let's see. Session hook. Okay, so, all right, so we can use the hook. Is there a better way of doing that? I guess no. So I guess we're gonna be using this hook thingy to, I guess, yeah, I guess we can just redirect, right? So we can just be like, hey. All right, so I'm gonna copy this thing, Ta -da -da. page, yes. So we got this hook, so session, loading. Okay, so we have to handle loading state at one point, but that's perfectly fine. Also means we can uh, throw this in here. It goes here. All right, so if there is session, then we can, okay, session user email. Cool, so you can actually get access to the user from the current session state. That's pretty neat. Okay, so if there is session, then we, uh, okay, I'm gonna use that. Where's the sign out? Co okay, so sign out is also a function provided by um next auth that is kind of like this is really cool i'm really liking this library basically saves us a lot of time all right so if there is session then we need to do that okay and if there is no session not sign in sign in yes and i guess in this case since we you i mean do we need the custom login page because i feel like maybe we don't so I guess if we're now uh, refresh this, yep. So it goes says not signed in. And if I click that, okay, I mean, it has a really nice login page. So maybe I just don't need a custom login page then. We do need custom register page basically. Uh, no, wait a second. That was a mistake. That was a, oh, I'm an idiot. Oh no. I, oh my God. Okay. That was a terrible, terrible mistake. We do need custom login page and I just, Deleted it completely. Um, how much of it was in pages? How much of it was in our... <laughs> no, I should have committed that before doing this. No. Okay, God damn it. Uh, no, it's not. I don't think it's JSON web token. I mean, I don't know what they're using under the hood actually, but you know, it's like they handle that. So 
Oh god, okay, I just screwed up everything and deleted the login page. Um, so custom login, Facebook login, login page, uh, pages, how do you not search for integration? Wait a second, so there was the, where did we see the custom login page actually? Was it in credentials? Multiple providers. Check your YouTube stream for the code. No, 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 no. That, I mean, you know, on one hand, it's a solid suggestion, but but no, 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 no. Um. Anyway, I think that we already seen that custom login page somewhere, but oh God, where was it? Why did I do that? I should have committed that. No, it's not in trash. It's in, it's it was the VSL. Like this thing lives in VSL, so it just wipes the thing. I think. Um, can I undo that actually? Wait a second. Can I can you undo? No, it doesn't undo that. Oh no. Oh man. Um. Oh wait. You know what? I think I should have it in uh, my paste history. That's one thing. Uh, React sign out. So this is not it. There's the pushing to online. There's the lot. Was it? No, that's not it. ESRF token. Is this one? No, it's not this one. But we're getting closer. So I almost found it in my paste history. <laughs> ah, there we go. There it is. Okay. <laughs> right. Let's not do this again, Let us, shall we? Um, okay. So this is login. Then there's our form. And then there's this thing that goes over here. That was very dumb. Let's not do this again. Okay, uh, save that. Right, so this did it as here's our token. Again, email. I remember that mistake. Say, okay, this looks good. Um, now I forgot why we needed the custom login form. Right, because we needed the register button. Okay, uh, that's perfectly fine. So I guess, yes, I guess. No, it, uh, okay, sir. So something is broken. Input tag. Oh, no, that's, that looks fine. Why are you broken? It works now. Okay, so test at gmail.com. One, two, three, sign in. Something went wrong. What went wrong? Uh, credentials, webpack. Uh, why doesn't it work? So, right, this thing loads fine, right? So, am I credentials? Yeah, so this looks okay. Email, password. This also looks test at gmail.com. One, two, three, sign in. What actually happens? Uh, login. Have you failed? Login JS refresh zero. Where's my XHR? So what has happened? What is going on here? There's like no previews for any of that. VinV for the win. Yes, VinV is absolutely amazing combination. Uh, form fields. What do you mean form fields? I think that looks fine, right? Get initial props. What am I missing? Uh, I feel like it should work, but it doesn't for whatever reason. So it redirects to login and there is, doesn't seem like there's any, okay, let me just kill preserve log, wipe the log, go back. So kill the log now, click sign in. 302 found, CSRF sign in true. Um, what is wrong with this? So wait a second, where is, where did I get the custom login page last time? Custom, custom models, custom providers. That's not what I want. Is there no, a hey. custom login page, custom sign in. Oh, there we go. I think that's page options. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right, so you can just override them actually. Oh, interesting. Okay, so you can just say pages. Okay, so this is a properties to add custom login page. For example, you can use pages option. Right, so I assume by the location of that, we pass it over here, right? So we say login. And then we say register here, which is uh, quite nice. So I guess it, wait a second, does it mean it has the login and register pages and I don't need to 
provide them? Is that is that correct? So it has the sign. Where's the registration button then? Uh, okay, I'm con You know what? Let's just go with custom ones. Why the hell not? Okay. Um, that is utterly broken. So login. Register. Like, okay, let's just resolve this. And I feel like this would be a nice place to end the first stream at least. It's... <laughs> If I wouldn't screw up, we probably would end this a lot faster, but hey, well, you know, software development do be like that. Um, okay, there's our login page. So if we go, uh, whoops, that is not a correct URL. This is the correct URL, All right? Not signed in, so if we click sign in. Cool, yes, so we got that test at gmail.com, one, two, three, sign in. Right, so what is going on and why is it not? working so it sends this we got the post tested gmail password one to three so this seems fine right uh this is old errors i think at least uh okay so let's see so this is now working better so let's see where's our login is handled here console log Existing, let's try to log the credentials and existing user again because I'm confused like it worked just now, right? So it's I'm not tripping And it didn't log anything so it doesn't API with callback credentials. Yeah, so the I Mean we didn't change it last time. So I assume that should work this time as well um okay okay so there is invalid value or prop value and input tag uh okay so there is some issues here where is that value for prop input tag pages app js blah 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 dist where the hell is it? login okay so it's in login and it doesn't like the value for input tag but we don't have any values here Oh, 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 okay. I know what's wrong. I forgot to pass in the CSRF token. There we go. I knew I missed something. As to Gmail, sign in and server error. <laughs> uh, sign in with credentials only supported if JSON web tokens are... What do you say? You just worked. You just worked. Um. Okay, anyway, let's... Going on. I li literally delete one file and everything just breaks credentials provider can only used if json web tokens are used for sessions so how the hell do i enable it explicitly enable jvt sessions session jvt okay yeah sure why not this this goes where this is okay i guess this is options that go over here right so session update age 24 yeah so this this seems okay jvt goes to true Okay, right, that seems fine. Let's uh, compile successfully. Okay, let's try this again. Are we working now? No, we are not for whatever reason. So sign in with credentials is only supported if JSON web token, again. Uh, your mic is cutting silence. Am I not speaking loud enough? Okay. Apologies. Uh, let me just try to move it a bit closer. I guess it's it's a bit weird that it's cutting because I don't think it ever happened before. Maybe it's because my cat is just like screaming in the background. <laughs> okay, so we got the CSRF token, we got the email passwords, and then it just doesn't do anything. I wonder why. Okay. So seems like it actually does set the user. Oh, oh, well, it worked. Okay, I guess it didn't recompile it or something. Now it works. Okay, so I guess there was the problem with the uh, current state of it or recompilation or whatever, right? Since now it works, so let's try to wipe our storage. There we go, reload that. So we get this, yes, you are not signed in. Click sign in, we get to the login, that's nice. Sign in and we get to home. Cool. Okay, so now it works exactly as expected. Okay, let's commit that before I delete something else. 
Okay. Um, make login and register procedures work. Obviously it looks like crap, but you know what? It works. And I think for the first stream, that's perfectly fine. So we set the foundations, we got the authorization, we got the tailwind, which means that the next time we can start working on the actual functionality of it and then add some unit tests, add some integration tests. Not sure about unit tests, but definitely integration tests. In the end, we're going to add the end-to-end -end testing and we're going to add uh, the continuous deployment. So that's basically the plan. Right, so if, uh, I, I pushed everything to the uh, GitHub. If you guys have any questions, now is the time to ask them. If not, then we can just wrap it up here. Um, meanwhile, let me just uh, include this. I will need to include the link to the GitHub. Uh, what theme do you use in Windows Terminal? Uh, so the Windows Terminal is not customized at all. This is default. Uh, the shell is Z shell with the oh my Z shell config and the Honkai. Uh, so Z shell Honkai theme. So this is basically what gives it. Uh, okay, apparently Doug Doug God does know how to search for it. Honukai. Okay, I was wrong. So this is basically the theme that I use for Z shell, and it looks very nice. What are you going to use for your CI pipelines? I think just uh, GitHub CI. I mean, it works perfectly fine, and you know, it's quite generous. So just probably gonna go with that. Our level 10K is a nice theme. Uh, let me have a look. What is that? Our level 10K. Z shell theme. Yeah, that looks pretty good as well. I mean, I like my Honkai because it's pretty lean and also gives you quite a bit of info. But this looks quite nice as well. Not a fan of the, you know, stretch stuff, but that's that's a different question. It's like... <laughs> What about deployments? I think Exaframe is going to be used for deployments. So we're going to deploy the MongoDB and then just uh, roll the uh, deployments of the app itself with Exaframe whenever we redeploy the new version. That's, that's at least how I t tend to set up most of my deployments. So there you go. All right. I think, yeah, that, that basically covers it. So uh, push that, push did that. Uh, greetings from Katrin and Marco. Hey guys, welcome to the stream. Uh, <laughs> uh, nice of you to drop by. <laughs> Exaframe nice. I hope I'll not miss that stream. I mean, you know, if you miss the stream, there's always a VOD on the, um, on the YouTube. So you can just watch it there. Right. I guess that would be a good spot to wrap it up. That was a nice longish stream. I actually hope it would end it sooner, but I guess, you know, I just had to delete files and then spend 20 minutes trying to figure out what's wrong. Uh, but yes, anyway, thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the streams. If you still have any questions, uh, drop them in the comments on YouTube or just join the Discord and ask there. Next stream for this project is going to be next Wednesday. So I'm going to try to do this every Wednesday. As usual, uh, we're going to see if there's more streams. I'm not sure. But definitely on Wednesday, uh, maybe sooner. If that's going to happen, keep an eye on announcements. And uh, yeah, let's let's bring this project to at least the MVP version, I guess, and uh, see how that goes. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for your continued support. I hope you enjoyed the stream and I see you next time.